spike drop seed, the three ons, the Aristides, black grama. It's all looking good. You got snake weed in here. Quail like to hide in it. This low grown mesquite with the bush muley in it, that makes a, a quail house, but the mesquite, it's probably a little thick here, but this low grown mesquite's the hardest one to take out. Take a walk through the Turkey Track Ranch in southeastern New Mexico with range biologist Russell Fox of the BLM, and you'll get the lowdown on the good, the bad, and the just plain nasty flora that populate this area. Fox is part of a concerted effort that includes local, state, and federal agencies working to rehabilitate nearly a quarter of a million acres of rangeland as part of Restore New Mexico. We've partnered quite a bit with NRCS and the Soil Water Conservation Districts to do big brush treatments here, mesquite with helicopters and also with fixed wing. You can brush sculpt this country, leave the draws out for a thermal and hiding cover for your wildlife, but fix these tablelands back up where you've got the prairies that were historically grazed by the big ungulates. Works out good, we can maximize our edge, we can make it better than it was, I believe. And making it better is what today's hunting party is all about. Each hunter that's out here must have purchased a habitat stamp when they bought their license in order to hunt on federal land, also known as the Sites Act. The money generated helps fund Restore New Mexico. Take, for example, the water tanks that dot the landscape. Usually it's a partnership between the, the BLM and the ranchers where we'll, we'll plan out water systems, and all those water systems are for wildlife too. We'll put the bird ramps in there to where they can get in, get them a drink, and also get out. You'll lose a lot if you don't have those bird ramps, and that's a big project we have, just making sure that they can get in and get out. Artificial water sources are crucial in these parts because of plants like mesquite that deprive the natural grasses of their fair share. Wildlife and livestock in the area unwittingly spread the seeds, allowing the mesquite to thrive. It's got a big bean that wildlife and livestock really enjoy when it's ripe and good for the pickings and they'll eat it and then they'll defecate it out the places they're going and it spreads that way. Once it gets above about four foot tall or four years old, it's impervious to fire until it gets really big, big bases where the fire can follow it down in the ground. Long-lived plant, high water user. And that's what we've got the biggest problem here in the southeast is just too much mosquitoes. They'll start using up so much of the resources that the grass production can go to, to nothing in some areas and all you get is more and more mesquite. New Mexico Department of Game and Fish biologist George Farmer says what? he can see a marked difference in areas they have treated. And the number of birds um, of course, Mother Nature plays part two, but a lot of times in those treated areas, we can see a difference in the number and quality of the birds. And after harvesting a bird, Fox can see that the mesquite is even part of the quail's diet, along with some other unfortunate insects. Well, looky here. We've got what I would call a squash bug in this adult. See that? That green bug? Mm -hmm. It looks to me to be that could be mesquite beans that's in there. If we had a botanist with us, they could tell us what all these seeds were. So he's got two of these bugs in him. That's what was breakfast for quail in New Mexico. Down the road, Russell shows us what they hope the range will eventually look like. You can see where we came in here and we knocked this mesquite back to the level it should be back. You can tell just the, the road and the fence line cat contrast here. If you look back to the east, you got the sea of the grasses and on the left hand side here compared to the right hand side back to the south where you've got so much of the resource tied up with just the mesquite. The brush gets so heavy and it has the competitive advantage over the grasses. Here, we set that mesquite back and you'll have more diversity and higher production. Improvements in range management procedures have also made it possible to have less of an impact on the overall area while being able to focus primarily on the plants in question. When you're talking about taking out this mesquite like this, if it's young enough, the fire can take it out, but because we've done such a good job of keeping the fires out of these communities, the mesquite's old enough that it's impervious to fire. We can get in there with heavy equipment, a crawling tractor with a, a root plow, and you could take a whole lot of this mesquite out. But the problem is there's so much archeology span that's hidden within this grassland that you'd end up destroying a lot of your Native American history. Well, we can get in here with the, the aircraft and the herbicides and leave just a, a small 
ecological impact with our, with our aircraft coming across the, the top of it with a little bit of herbicide and for about 25 bucks an acre, we can do large pieces of country like this. But ultimately, all of their hard work also depends on mother nature showing up. The best way to have a good success on any range improvement projects is right before a long wet period. But you can't count on that. The monsoons will get about 80% of our moisture July to October. And that's the most dependable you've got. And then you'll have some winter moisture too. But that's in the hands of God. He decides when we get the rain. For more information on this and other habitat programs, log on to wildlife.state.nm.us and click on the Conservation tab. And we'd like to thank the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish for their dedication to conservation and education of New Mexico's most precious natural resources, New Mexico wildlife.